from the intro, this is going to be my labor and delivery vlog with Kaysen. This is the third time that I'm trying to record this, but YouTube wants to limit me to 15 minutes. They know I can't tell this story in 15 minutes, but we're going to try to cut it down to the nitty gritty so that we can get this vlog posted. So, let's start out with my first contraction, ladies. It happened at 2.09. Um, it woke me up out of my sleep. I immediately grabbed my phone, started my contraction counter. 2.15, my next one came. Both of those were about 45 seconds in length, and then those bad boys start coming every two minutes. Yes, every two minutes. Um, and we're lasting anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute and a half um, to two minutes long. So they immediately started kicking my butt. Um, I jumped out of bed, I went into the bathroom, I tried you know, my breathing technique, I did manage to get on my yoga ball, I sat on the toilet, um, I tried to swing my hips side to side because I was trying not to uh, wake my husband up. I wanted to make sure that I was actually in labor um, before I disturbed his sleep. So at about 2.45, I was in, in a lot of pain, so I decided to wake him up and let him know that I was actually in labor. Um, he was kind of delirious when he woke up at first, like, huh, and I'm like, I need you to get up because I need you to run my contraction counter because I want to get in the shower. I felt like that would, the water would ease my pain. Um, huge mistake. So I got in the shower um, at 2.45. I stayed in there approximately about five minutes. Um, and then my husband was like, babe, they're coming every two, like every two minutes, like they should be coming as quick. We need to go ahead and call the doctor. Um, and by this time I'd almost broke my shower door. Uh, because every time I got a contraction, I felt like I needed to hold on to something and kind of just bear down um, so that I could rock side to side and ease the pain. I have a towel shower, so there's no railing or bar on the inside. It is literally just the towel, shower, and clothes, and then a glass door. So I um, grabbed onto the door and kind of bear it down on that. After doing it twice, my husband was like, okay, get out. So by this time, my son had woke up and came in our room. Um, he normally comes in there about 3.30 in the morning because he wants to snuggle. So he came in our room. My husband started to get him some socks and shoes on. Um, he went to start our van, which we have push start. So he went up in the living room to start that. Um, by then, I realized we didn't have Casey's car seat in the car. So I yelled at him, babe, did you ever put the car seat in the car like I asked you to last night? He goes, oh shit, no. So he um, grabs the car seat, throws it in the back of the van. Um, he comes back inside, and we call the um, call my OB's office, which they have like an after hours um, nurses line. We left a message with the nurse. Whew, sorry, we left a message with the nurse, um, letting her know that my contractions were coming every two minutes. Um, she let us know that Dr. Mayju was on call and that she would let her know when she would be returning our call. So this was about 3 o'clock. Um, I was like, you know, we can't wait for her call anymore. I'm in unbearable pain. I had managed to get me um, some underwear on, a nursing bra, a tank top, some sweatpants, and an overnight pad. Um, I was like, we have to go. So my husband said, okay. He went and put my son in the car. Um, I went and let the dogs out while he was buckling him in. And I grabbed my son some of his snacks to go in his little, um, his, like, lunch bag that he takes to daycare every day because this was a Wednesday morning and we were expecting him to go to daycare because we were going to work. Um, my husband already called his sister to let her know that I was in labor and that we were going to drop Nathaniel off with her. Um, which she stays about 30 minutes away from us in Roseville, um, which that was our plan for labor and delivery the whole time to drop them off there. So we got, well, I got his um, yogurt, his juice together in his bag. Luckily, I already packed him like his chips and stuff for the day inside his lunch bag. Uh, the dog came in. <laughs> I'm sorry. The dog came in from outside from using the bathroom. I managed to get food in their bowl. Um, but then when my husband came back in to get me, I could not for the life of me think to grab a coat. All I could think to grab was my house coat. So I grabbed my house coat, put that on, and we were out the door in the car. Um, at about 3.15, um, my doctor did call me back. I, you know, let her know that I've been having contractions. They were every two minutes apart. They were lasting a minute long, and they had been going on for over an hour. 
she said, okay, well, you definitely need to come on in to labor and delivery. I told her we were already on the way. Um, we were in the car headed there. So she said, okay. So by the time we get to my sister-in-law's house, it's about 4 o'clock. Um, yeah, it was about 3.15 when we left the house, like pulling out of the driveway. So we got to her about 3.45, 4 o'clock. Um, we dropped Nathaniel off, got him out of the car, got his car seat out, his go bag to her, and then his snack bag. Um, and then we took off, headed toward the hospital, which was 40 minutes from her house to the hospital. Um, we got about maybe five minutes up the road, and I got the urge, like unbearable urge, to pee and poop. So, you know, of course I started, you know, yelling at my husband, you need to pull over, I have to pee. Um, uh, well not yelling, but I was like, you have to pull over, I have to pee really bad, I don't want to pee on myself, like I have to pee, I have to pee. Um, so he pulls over, and before he can even get the van, like, completely stopped, I'm like, ripping my seatbelt off. I like jump out in the middle of nowhere on the side of the highway. It's just highway and woods. I jump out, pull my underwear down, pull my, well, pull my sweatpants down, pull my underwear down, and like try to squat. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I have to poop and pee, and I'm not pooping and peeing on myself. And he's like, you know, don't act like you got to poop because it might be the baby coming out. Like, that's probably the baby time to come down, not you actually having to poop. So that kind of scared me a little bit. I tried to pee, nothing would come out. Um, so I started to get a contraction in. When that contraction left and went by, I managed to pull my underwear back up and pull my sweatpants back up um, and then climb back into the van. My husband had walked back on his side of the van and he had reached across to buckle my seatbelt for buckle my seatbelt for me um, to help me. And when he did that, my water broke. Um, I was in the car. It was 4:30. I was like, oh gosh, my water just broke on the side of the road, well, in the car. Um, luckily, I had on an overnight pad and some really thick sweatpants, so it didn't mess up my car seats or anything. Um, but I did not want to put him in panic, so I didn't tell him right away that my water had broke. Um, so I let him drive a little bit further. Um, we got a little bit closer to the hospital, and I'm like, babe, my water broke. So, of course, you know, the speeding <laughs> um, happens, which he, like he was not already speeding enough. But he speeds up a little bit more, so we get to the hospital right about 5 o'clock. Um, and as soon as we walk in, well, he goes and grabs a wheelchair, um, brings it back out to the van, um, gets me in it. We go inside. They ask, hey, are you in labor? Yes. So they immediately open the triage doors and tell me that a nurse is going to come get me. Um, there was a nurse walking a lady out, and she told me, let me walk her out, and then I'll come back and get you. So she came back in um, from walking her to the front desk. And she started to roll me back. We let her know that Dr. Major was expecting this. My contractions were two minutes apart. She asked, had I been checked? I told her no. They were supposed to check me at my appointment on Friday and that I was 38 weeks and three days and group B negative. So she goes, okay, let me take you. Um, we managed, well, I managed to get out of the wheelchair and lean over the triage bed, which we were back in the room by then. Um, she goes, can you sit on the side of the bed so I can check you? So I just hop on the bed. Um, I haven't pulled my sweatpants or my underwear completely off. I just have them like around my ankles and my legs are bent up on the table. Um, I immediately asked for my epidural, which I had told my husband when we were about halfway to the hospital that if he wanted me to do a vaginal delivery, I was going to have to get an epidural when I got to the hospital because there was no way I could take another five or six hours of the pain that I was in because I was expecting my labor to be, you know, at least 12 hours um, for this one. So he said, okay, you know, I don't know if he was just trying to appease me or if he was actually like concerned at how much pain I was in. Um, I did not yell and scream. I think I let out one scream when we were in the car and it was more so like a, a growl or and I felt like that's when my water broke. Um, but I managed to breathe through it and, or not breathe through it, because every time I got a contraction, I would immediately tense up and hold my breath, because it was that strong, it just took my breath away. So, once she checked me, she was like, well, honey, you're not getting an epidural, you're not getting anything, like, it's time to push. And I'm like, what do you mean it's time to push? She said, you're nine and a half, almost ten centimeters, she said, you literally have a lip left, like, we about to go have a baby. So, me and my husband are in panic shock then because we were like, okay, for one, we didn't think that things were going to happen that quick. We had not told anybody, so my husband quickly sends out a text message to let everybody know that we're at the hospital um, and that I'm about to start pushing. 
And so everybody's like, what? You know, my sister's name, um, which I didn't see this until after I had delivered um, because we did have a group chain of messages. So they rolled me back to labor and delivery. I have one nurse on my right side trying to draw blood. I have another nurse on the other side trying to get an IV started. Mind you, I'm still having contractions and I'm 10 centimeters dilated with no meds in me, no nothing. And so they're like, be still, we don't want to lose this IV port. And I'm like, uh, who are you telling that, like, I feel like every bone in my body is breaking. And my contractions weren't, they weren't in, my, in the front of my stomach, they weren't in my vagina, they were in my butt, in my back. Because my placenta was in the front, I had an anterior placenta, so my placenta was in the front. So I had really bad back labor and really bad butt labor. I literally felt like my butthole was turning inside out. Um, sorry if that does not sound appealing, but that's what I felt like. Um, so I started to push, um, you know, I gave up probably about four times, four or five times. My husband, you know, kept saying, you know, you got this, you're a champ. You know, he was great. My nurses were great. Um, you know, I was like, I'm not pushing no more. Y'all don't have to give me some drugs or give me something. And the nurse was like, okay, you don't have to push. You can kind of relax and sit this contraction out. Um, but she had this look of like, yeah, right on your face. And she was right because every time that contraction came and I told myself, I'm not pushing. I'm going to just sit this one out. Your body forces you to push. Um, so I kept pushing. <laughs> um, I did poop on myself. Nobody tells you that for inside of labor, but I did put on myself. Um, I felt like I needed to get on all fours to kind of help with the process. Um, so when I flipped over, the nurse wiped my butt, and I'm like, why you wipe my butt for? And my husband was like, babe, there's a lot of poop back there. And I'm like, oh. So <laughs> they weren't grossed out or anything. They were really great. She just cleaned me up, and we kept pushing. Um, my perineum had not stretched far enough, so they were using the oil, and they were trying to stretch it out and massage it. Um, the whole time, but the doctor came in at about, uh, I don't even remember what time it was, because by the time I'm in a fog or a day, she comes in, she goes, okay, I'm going to help you because the baby's head is having a hard time coming over your pelvic bone, so she asked me, did I want the assistance of a vacuum, I told her yes, it's either that or get a knife and do a cesarean, so she grabs a vacuum, she placed it on his head, I managed to push one time, his head popped out, she released the vacuum, I pushed again, his shoulders, the rest of his body came out. Um, he came out crying and I mean it was beautiful, you guys. Like it was wonderful. It was everything that I imagined that my back would be. Um, my husband got to cut the cord. Um, they immediately laid him on my chest for skin to skin and he stayed up there for basically about an hour before they made me, you know, give them to him for them to do anything else with him. Um they are very pro breastfeeding, pro, you know, baby saving room. They don't have a nursery, so I felt like it was really, really great. Um, and it worked out perfect because shift changes at 7. I had him at 6.57, so my nurses were really rooting for me because they're like, we worked hard all night. We want to see this baby be born. So from the time my first contraction to the time that Casey was born was 4 hours and 53 minutes, you guys. Like, there's no way I thought I would have a successful VBAC in under five hours. But I did it um, with the help of my nurses, with the help of my husband, who was absolutely amazing the whole entire time. Um, I can't really think of anything else. Um, his stats, he was 6 pounds, 15 ounces, exactly the same weight as his big brother. Um, he was 21 inches long. So, yeah, long and skinny. Um, but, yeah, he's my little chunk. If there's anything else that you want to know about the labor and delivery process or my BVAC, leave it down below and I'll try to answer those questions. But I'm trying to keep this vlog under 15 minutes. So I'll talk to you guys later.